This is Friday, August 12th, a little after midday. We're going to review the major asset classes and do a quick review for the week and a look ahead for the week coming up. Uh, the first one we're going to look at are the spiders, the S&P 500. And looking at the market location page, uh, we can see that the SPY is at the top of the range. We'll zoom in here to get a little better look. But we can see that the range, and don't forget the Ichimoku cloud is a range chart that's moving hard up. That's the 26 day range, the uh, dark red or maroon colored uh, line in the middle uh, is measuring the center of the 26 day range. And we can see that it's heading up. So we would anticipate that SPY will uh, continue to push the range upward if we look at the volume spread analysis bars, uh, we can see that we have the big move, the big participation, uh, the big participatory move up, and that now volume has uh, kind of petered out. So we're not ex anticipating anything big, but the SPY is on a buy signal, and we would anticipate that the upward drift uh, will continue for next week, uh, pushing the range a little higher. Uh, the next one we're going to look at are bonds. And this is TLT, the 20-year Treasury uh, Bond ETN. And we can see that bonds have come off the low of the range and have moved up toward the center. Uh, we'll zoom in and we can see that the 26-day range is moving sideways. And this light blue line is the 9-day range, uh, which is drifting uh, sideways to uh, down slightly. So bonds are currently on a buy on the candle trader, have pushed slightly above uh, uh, the fractal range high, and as with the SPY, volume is not dramatic. The Chaikin Oscillator, which is the Rapid Response Volume Price Oscillator, is drifting down. So our expectation for the coming week for bonds uh, would be to drift mostly sideways to slightly up uh, in an undramatic fashion. Now, one thing we can do is if we go down here to the left side of the chart and click on this little rose-colored five-day icon, we can enter in the current price, which is 139.96.96. Uh, we can enter the current volatility, and for this I'm going to use the uh, implied volatility from the option chain, uh, which is 12.18. And then we just want to look ahead about five days, and we'll click Calculate. And we can see the anticipated range for next week, the next five days, is about uh, one, a little less than 142 on the upside and a little under 138 on the low side. And we can place that on the chart. And if we zoom in here, uh, this would be our expectation for TLT for the week uh, beginning next Monday. And again, that ranges from a little, a little under 142 to a little under uh, 138. Uh, the next we're going to look at is gold. Okay, this is GLD, the uh, Spider Gold Trust. And that has moved up to the top of the range and come off of it. It's currently in between neither a buy nor a sell signal on the candle trader. Uh, we'll zoom in and take a look at it. And we have a flat to slightly downward drift on the 26-day and flat on the 9-day range. And that's really confirmed by the tightness of the range in GLD. Uh, if we look at the volume spread analysis, uh, we've had a couple, uh, I guess, participations on the downside. Uh, nothing really on the upside for the past uh, couple weeks. The Chaikin Oscillator is drifting down, as is the accumulation uh, distribution bar. 
So our expectation for gold, GLD, uh, for the coming week would be a sideways to down uh, drift with a expected price range uh, of about 130 on the upside and a little under 130 on the upside and a little, little above, uh, well, a little under 126 on the downside. So the continuation of a fairly tight range in the spite of gold trust would be our expectation uh, for next week. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is oil. Okay, USO is the United States Oil Fund. Uh, that's the ETN for oil. And oil has moved off the very bottom of the range at about 922 and has moved up smartly since. It's currently on a candlestick buy signal. And there's been some participation uh, with the volume spread analysis to the upside, uh, but it hasn't been uh, what you'd call exuberant. Uh, the chicken oscillator is drifting up and the accumulation distribution line is not bullish but neither is it particularly bearish. If we look at the five day range and here again we'll use the uh, volatility from the option chain uh, for USO it's 38%. And if we want to do a five-day five ahead look, we'll calculate that and we'll place that on the chart. And we're looking for next week uh, a general upward drift in oil uh, with the expected price move to just under 11 and staying just above 10. So again, that's a fairly tight range, but the USO only has a 0.3 ATR and it's not... Uh, it's not a big mover in any respect. The next one we're going to look at is uh, the euro dollar, uh, and we use that as a proxy for the UUP, which is the US dollar fund. And if we look at the FXE, it's come off the bottom of the range. Uh, it's currently on a buy signal on the candlestick trader but well within the range on the fractal charts. And let's just pull up a fractal chart and take a look at that. And we can see that the high breakout would occur at 109.48, the low breakout of 107.65, and we're trading in the middle of that range. The uh, 534 oscillator, uh, and again, this is a Bill Williams chart. This would be the awesome oscillator. Uh, has an upward uh, bias. We have three green bars in a row, so this is an upward bias uh, in FXE for the week ahead. It's approaching the top of the range, so we would look for FXE to bump against the top of the range at around 109.37. Uh, uh, nothing dramatic is happening uh, in volume spread. Uh, or in the uh, other volume indicators. So as has been the case with several uh, of the markets for the past month, uh, there have been no dramatic moves uh, at all. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at is a chart of, or a made-up chart of volatility so that you can understand maybe a little better what volatility really means. Okay, this is a chart of, we'll call it XYZ, uh, over some period of time. And the green, the black, and the red lines uh, represent closing prices over this period of time. And I'm going to ask you a question. Which of these three lines has the greatest volatility? Uh, the red, the black, or the green? And I'm going to give you a hint, and then I'll then I'll answer the question. Now, volatility by definition measures the rate of change of the difference in stock prices. And the key phrase there is the rate of change. So if we look at these three lines, one with an upward drift, 
one with a downward drift and one totally flat, you probably guess that the red line has the higher volatility because it's heading down. Uh, the green line would be second because it's heading up and there is some price movement and that the black line in the center of the graph has the least amount of volatility. Uh, the correct answer is they're all the same and they're all close to zero because volatility measures the rate of change of the difference in stock prices. And that's just something to keep in mind. I think it's an important concept, uh, both for options trading uh, and for stock trading. Okay, that's our review of the major asset classes uh, for the week coming up. Uh, I hope you have found this useful.